it looks like I was wrong about Titans cornerback Christian Fulton because him and the Titans defense continue to dominate training camp practice. I'm going to break it all down on today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. To the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. Titans fans, the Tennessee Titans defense led by Christian Fulton continues to dominate. We finally got an update on rookie offensive lineman Peter Skaronsky and Jamarco Jones gets kicked out of practice again. I am going to go on an epic Rowland's rant about Jamarco Jones at the end of our show, but we got a lot to discuss. Let's get into all of it before we do. want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. A championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. It's the same with your vehicle. So for the parts that fit, head to eBay Motors and look for the green check. Stay in the game with eBay Guaranteed Fit. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Do want to thank you guys for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round on all apps and always for free. Make sure that you get subscribed, stay subscribed to the Locked on Titans podcast. We've got more practices coming up this week, more practice next week. I'm diving into it every single day. You don't want to miss any of the updates that I'll be bringing you. But we got to start with the Tennessee Titans dominant defense. And again, led by Christian Fulton. So the Titans came out and they did one-on-one periods today, which is what you would think. One-on-one wide receiver versus the cornerback, all of that. Then they split into some two-on-two, which is another offense-focused drill that is, I mean, it's two-on-two. There's so much space. It is literally set up for the offense to win, and the defense just completely locked it down. The Titans did a little bit of low red zone seven-on-seven. The defense, again, locked it down. Uh, Christian Fulton had three straight pass breakups in one-on-one. Uh... The Titans' defense was everywhere today, especially in the secondary. So many pass breakups, so many near interceptions, two interceptions as well. Uh, There was an interception by Shaheen Carter at the goal line on Malik Willis. Another interception by Anthony Kendall on Malik Willis. Now, the second one on Malik Willis, there are six seconds. They're simulating a game. There are six seconds left. Malik Willis had to throw the pass, try to force something. Let's calm down on, you know, you know me. I'll be honest about what's going on with each of the quarterbacks. Malik made some questionable throws, but they're situational things where if it's fourth down and there's six seconds left and you need a touchdown to win, I'd rather Malik try to force something in to score and throw a pick than pull a Derek Carr and throw it out of bounds on fourth down or something like that or throw it short of the sticks or whatever. So let's focus on the defensive side of this rather than diving into, you know, Malik right now. I just wanted to explain that though because I know how the comment section gets. But uh, three pass breakups for Christian Fulton again. Like I said, those two interceptions. Um, A linebacker almost got an interception. I think it was Luke Gifford almost got an interception at one point in time off Will Levis. Um, We saw a near interception of Amani Hooker on Ryan Tannehill as well. So whether it be first team, second team, Third team, doesn't matter. The Titans' defense was lights out. Uh, Not only did they have near interceptions, a couple interceptions, a ton of pass breakups. Uh, I think it was Amani Hooker that knocked away a pass over the middle from Chickaconquo as well. So a lot of good plays from the defense. Pressure from Arden Key, from Danico Autry. Tyre Tart, um, Tier Tart got into the backfield at one point on a run play and made a stop in the backfield. So the Titans' defense is just out there dominating. And I mean, at at some point, it's not just about, you know, oh, the Titans offense is, you know, new. They don't have any continuity. The the offense isn't as talented. At at some point, we just have to sit back and realize, like, maybe this is going to be the best defense in the NFL. Like, they have the talent to do so. If the Titans stay healthy with all the talent they have on the defensive line, and we can say whatever we want about the Titans secondary in the past. 
But Sean Murphy bunting, Christian Bolton at this level, McCreary and Molden rotating in the slot with Byard and Hooker healthy behind them, that's a really good secondary. The health makes us kind of wonder, huh, are these guys? But if all those guys are out there, the Titans are going to have a great secondary. We already know they have a great uh, front seven and definitely a great defensive line. So I think that while it's easy to say, oh, it's the Titans offense is so bad, the defense looks this good. Also worth noting that early in training camps, defenses are supposed to be ahead of offenses. You play cover three, you play cover two, you play man. But look, the Titans have different rules and different adjustments in their defense, but it's a lot different on offense with an entirely new playbook and all that than it is on defense. You've been running the same coverages and the same ideas. There are just little tweaks from team to team. Offense can be a lot more diverse and a lot more different. So uh, the defense, absolutely dominant. Again, I want to dive back into Christian Fulton. Three pass breakups, constant tight coverage. And I'm not just talking about today. I'm talking about throughout training camp here. I mean, it's been consistently reported that Fulton has been fantastic. Uh, he's at 195 pounds, which is bigger than normal. And Mike Vrabel talked about him being more physical, being more aggressive, but not losing his quickness with his weight. Um, and it's been said, going against DeAndre Hopkins every single day. This is the impact that Hopkins can make. We think about Hopkins' impact. We only think about offense. But Christian Fulton getting to go up against DeAndre Hopkins, one of the most physical receivers, one of the best wide receivers in NFL history at the catch point, that's huge for Christian Fulton and what he needs to practice on. So just wanted to make sure I took some time to give a shout-out to Fulton. Also, Aziz Alshire, leader, intense on the field. He's been making plays. He's been making his presence felt. And that's what the Titans have needed at linebacker. A big, bulky, strong linebacker that can make his presence felt over the middle. I love that. Um, again, we talked about it the other day. Dr. Gibby continues to get first team reps next to Aziz Alshire. I know you, there's a lot of Monty Rice fans out there, but clearly there is a change in the water. Dr. Gibby making his push, undrafted free agent and maybe starting linebacker in year two. That would be incredible. So that's something to watch. And finally, Jaden Peavy, the backup defensive lineman, the undrafted free agent out of Texas Tech last year, only played in one game for the Titans. He was heavier, he was slower, and defensive line coach Terrell Williams spent a lot of time in his interview on Thursday morning talking about Jaden Peavy, how he's gotten quicker, faster, leaner, his hands are better, everything has improved, and they even said, what's it like? I think it was Buck Rising said, you know, how's Peavy going to do backing up some of these guys on the D-line like Simmons and Tartan and Autry? And he said, well, we don't know who's backing up anybody or playing behind anybody was the phrasing. He, he, Terrell Williams called it out. Hey, you earn it day by day, snap by snap out here. So there's no guarantee that PV is going to be playing behind anybody. So Tier Tart kind of acting up a little bit throughout the offseason about his contract, not happy about playing on the, on the second round tender for a restricted free agent. Be careful. Jaden PV might just take your spot now. So, shout out to the defense. They've been balling. But I want to talk about a young guy on offense. We haven't talked a lot about Peter Skaronsky. We got an update from his position coach, Jason Hotelling. So, I want to give an update on what he had to say about Skaronsky. Before we get into it, though, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy Sports. August is here, and you know what that means. The official start of Fantasy Football Drafting Month. Get championship ready for your home league by trying out best ball on Underdog Fantasy. All you have to do is one live snake draft, and then there's no waivers, no trades, and Underdog sets your best lineup every single week. Try it out with Underdog's Best Ball Mania Tournament. It's the largest fantasy football contest of all time. And it's back and even bigger with $15 million of total prizes up for grabs, including an absurd $3 million going to the winner. $3 million to the fantasy winner. I mean, you got to sign up for that. Last year, the winner drafted their team in July. So you don't have to wait around. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store. Sign up with the promo code Locked On. To get your first deposit doubled up to $100. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code locked on. Titan 
Titans fans, let's continue today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast, breaking down Titans training camp practice from Thursday. Talked about the defense dominating Christian Fulton, kind of being the star so far. But now I do want to transition and get a little update on Titans first round pick, Peter Skaronsky. So all of the position coaches talked to the media before practice on Thursday. And new offensive line coach, remember he just replaced Keith Carter this year, Jason Hotelling, they call him Haas. So I'm going to call him Coach Haas going forward. Jason Hotelling is the name. Coach Haas is the nickname. So we'll ride with that. But he talked about Skaronsky, and it was the first, I feel like, serious update we've got on Peter Skaronsky um, since training camp happened. Of course, offensive linemen don't get talked about as much as other positions. That's a classic football cliche, but going to try to break that here and talk a little Skaronsky. So I'm going to dive into some quotes from Hotelling from Coach Haas. Before I do, thank you guys again for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round on all apps, always for free. Get subscribed, stay subscribed to the Locked on Titans podcast. Also, throw a thumbs up on the video if you're watching right now. The show is always free. All I ask for in return is the press of a button. So go ahead and throw me a thumbs up if you're watching right now. But moving right along. Peter Skaronsky apparently has been awesome. Let's dive into this quote from Coach Haas. He says, Peter has done a great job as far as just continuing to come out and work every day, getting better. I've heard this a bunch from other lines and stuff and people throughout football. Iron sharpens iron. Him against Jeff Simmons every day and battling with him, continue to work different techniques. Again, face, feet, and hands where they're going, when you're throwing them, stuff like that. It's been awesome to see him continue to grind and work has really been a good thing. It's been awesome, according to Coach Jason Hotelling, watching Peter Skaronsky develop and go against Jeffrey Simmons every single day. But uh, they also asked uh, Coach Haas about moving Skaronsky to right tackle, and he kind of echoed what Mike Rabel said earlier in the week or Late last week, quote, right now, I think Mike Vrabel said it in a press conference. He's comfortable there at left guard. But there is certainly versatility to do other things. Right now, he's hanging there at left guard and just continuing to work. End quote. Guys, I talked about this after Mike Vrabel shot down the idea of Skaronsky moving to right tackle. I personally have never been a fan of that move or that option. I have always wanted the Titans to bring in a veteran free agent or stick somebody internally at right tackle rather than moving Skaronsky. If you move Skaronsky from left guard to right tackle, now you're worse at right tackle and you're worse at left guard. I'd rather get worse at one spot than worse at two. And I do want to mention this again. Peter Skaronsky never played on the right side. Some of you guys think that you can, offensive linemen can flip from left to right and it's no big deal. There are people within the offensive line community professionals like a Duke Bennyweather. He's the best offensive line trainer in the NFL. He'll tell you it is not easy to switch sides. Your stance is different, which foot you're using most, where your weight is positioned, how you use your hands. It's all different from one side to the other. So you take Peter Skaronsky, who only played on the left side in college, never played on the right side, and you're going to move that guy to the right side in the NFL? You're going to let him play on the right side for the first time in five years in the NFL? After you've been practicing practicing him at guard since he got drafted? It's just not a good idea. He's comfortable at guard. He can stay at guard. And let's be real. He's probably going to be an excellent guard, like top tier, like one of the top 10 best guards in the NFL. That's what you should be getting when you draft pick number 11 and you take a guard. You should get a top 10 guard immediately, immediately. Think about a guy like a Zach Martin. You know what I mean? Yeah, he can play right tackle and be good there. I mean, Zach Martin's amazing now, but early they started him out at guard and he was an all pro. So think about it like that. I know that that some people are like, hey, man, we can't deal with this right tackle situation. They need to bump Skaronsky over there, blah, blah, blah. But I, I just think what would – maybe Skaronsky can play tackle next year. I'm not saying that he can't play tackle, and he should never play tackle ever. 
I'm just saying, as a rookie, let Peter Skaronsky focus in on one job. And through that one job, learn the technique, learn the offense, learn the speed of the NFL, learn the strength of the NFL. He needs to settle into being an NFL player, and it's just so much easier to do that when he sticks at one spot. So I know that there is the tendency to think that you take this guy who was a great offensive tackle in college and you put him at offensive tackle in the NFL. It's not that crazy. I get it if you think that way. But I think the Titans are making the right decision here. Let Skaronsky be awesome at guard. And as I've talked about recently, in the Titans' offense, the interior three offensive linemen are the most crucial to the run game. So having a great guard is not, especially what Mike Vrabel was talking about the other day where they want to be strong in the middle to allow Tannehill to step up and they want their offensive tackles just to push the edge rushers around. Well, from that vantage point, tackle is going to be easier to play than the interior guys when you add in the duties in the run game and the duties in pass protection. So I like keeping Skaronsky at guard for right now. Maybe in the future, in his second, third year, they could move him to tackle if they need to. But for right now, I want that man at left guard, and it sounds like that's exactly what Mike Vrabel is going to do. We've talked a lot about the right tackle position, just, you know, de facto offensive line conversations here. But I'm going to get even deeper into something that I want to say about the right tackle position, and it includes Jamarco Jones. because. It's two practices now this week that Jamarco Jones has been kicked out of. And, um, well, how do I say this? I'm sick of him. I'm, I'm sick of the guy. I think the Titans should move on. So I'll explain that in just a moment. But first. Titans fans, let's cap off today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. I got a little bit of a Rollins rant for you guys. For the last few weeks, I've been very, very detail-oriented. I've been very, very information-oriented. We're going over what happened at practice. I'm reporting different details, quotes from players and coaches and all that. But as my everydayers know, uh, every so often, I'll just take a segment, take five minutes, and just go off about something that's bothering me, just an opinion that I have. And I got one for you guys today. So let me set set the stage a little bit here. So Jamarco Jones, and I put more stock into some of this stuff than some of you guys do, and that's fine. Uh, maybe it's just, you know, my being in the media, whatever. But in an interview last week, um, after practice, just a couple of reporters go up to Jamarco Jones asking some questions. His demeanor, his attitude, terrible. He is not respecting the questions. He's not given any kind of valid answer. Um, using the F word, stuff like that. And listen, more than the words that he used, if, if I could play, if I could play the interview for you guys, I would, I would. But you could go back and find it. Jamarco Jones answered questions. And he's just, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to get better. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about any of that. I just, you know, try to get, try to, try to do better on the stuff. Try to, try to get better at the other stuff. But like, literally, just completely disinterested, blowing it off. And and there is a hate, uh, like a like a tinge of just utter disrespect. I don't care about you people. Get out of my face. I don't even want to be here. But blah, blah, blah. There, there's an air of that. I'm too good for all this. Screw all you people. There's there there's an air of that. Okay. All right, you don't want to deal with the media. You want to have a bad attitude off the field. You know, whatever. I know some of you guys listening don't care about that. I do, because to me, it's a deeper reflection of who you are more than just answering questions for the media. But whatever, you don't want to look too much into that like I am. That's fine. But then the Titans bring in Chris Hubbard, who is supposed to compete at right tackle and who could feasibly start at right tackle. So, 
before Chris Hubbard was brought in, who were the options? John Ajuku, an undrafted free agent out of Boise State. Jalen Duncan, a sixth-round developmental offensive tackle who shouldn't be ready to play anyways. Jamarco Jones had the right tackle spot locked up just by default. But the Titans bring in Chris Hubbard. And since the Titans brought in Chris Hubbard, Jamarco Jones got in a shoving match with Jeffrey Simmons and got kicked out of practice on the third play of practice. That was Tuesday's practice. And then today, or if you're hearing this on Friday, yesterday, on Thursday, Jamarco Jones lays a blindside, illegal, dirty hit on Chance Campbell and gets thrown out of practice again. So, this dude gets in a fist fight with Taylor Lewan before practice last year, gets kicked out of two practices in back-to-back days after the Titans bring in some competition, has a terrible attitude when he's talking to the media the one time that he's talked to the media after practice. I mentioned this the other day, but guys, every single person right now that's played sports, if you have played team sports in your life, you know, and if you don't know this kind of player and you play team sports, then it was probably you. Everybody knows a guy who when the going gets tough, they lay down. They cry, they pout, they complain. Oh, the coach is being unfair. Blah, 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 blah. I was better than that guy. They gave him, they gave that spot to him over me, and it wasn't fair. Everybody knows a crybaby. Everybody knows the type of guy that I'm talking about. Forget Jamarco Jones. Think about your sports experience. Everybody knows that kind of guy. The crybaby, the whiner, the complainer. I'm hurt, coach. I can't go out there. That guy. We all know him. Again, if you don't know one. But anyways, I think Jamarco Jones is that guy. I think he's pouting because the Titans brought in Chris Hubbard. He has a poor attitude. He's whiny. He gets tested a little bit by the defensive line. He starts to throw a fit and act out. He laid a dirty hit on his own teammate. And Aziz Alshire, uh, Alshire got in his face immediately. And then what happened? Mike Vrabel kicked him out of practice. Look, I'm not against intensity in practice. I'm not against a couple of dust-ups in training camp. I think that's fine. I'm saying directly the evidence and the pattern of behavior that we have from Jamarco Jones, don't just kick him out of practice. Get him off this team. At this point, I would rather have Jalen Duncan drowned over there. I would rather have John Ojuku get a shot. I would rather go with Chris Hubbard. Anybody but Jamarco Jones. I didn't like Jamarco Jones last year. I thought the Titans should cut him this year. I was wrong about that, but here we are. And Mike Vrabel did a press conference. And afterwards, I don't know how to interpret it any other way, but if you look at Mike Vrabel's demeanor and you look at the way that he answered the question, he is absolutely sick and tired of Jamal Jones's antics. So, I, I just, I don't know. Dude is, um, he's just not a Titan. He's just not a Titan. So, I don't know. I don't know how else to explain it. Uh, it's one of those things where if you played sports, you know exactly what kind of guy Jamarco Jones is. And I, I just don't think that's a Tennessee Titan. At the end of the day, Mike Vrabel recruited this guy in high school. And I think if Mike Vrabel didn't have a personal connection to, Jamar- to Jamarco Jones, he would not be on this team. So I'm just sick of it. The tight one, it's hurting the entire team because now the guy who Mike Vrabel wants to start at right tackle has been kicked out of two different practices, meaning he's not getting reps. He's not building chemistry. He's not building cohesion with his other starting offensive linemen. At some point, when, do this guy, when does this guy become more of a distraction than a help? 
and you just look for something else just to get his personality out of the equation. So, tell me what you guys think down below, but I, I'm just sick of Jamarco Jones. I don't care if he's better than some of the other guys. I'd rather play other people over him because he's just not a Tennessee Titan, in my opinion. Not the kind of guy I want to root for. Not the kind of guy who should be on this team. But with that being said, that is going to do it for today's show. Defense dominates. Here's Karonsky update. Marco Jones kicked out of practice again. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans.